<laughs> I'm going to show you a 27 second <clears throat> video. So you may be following along where I am trying to get through a gallery um, session, a two hour session that Thomas John did back in September, late September of 2023. These were a lot of um, different readings with different women and four, four men were in attendance. I think, I think one or two might've gotten a reading out of the hundred and I think 114 people that were there. And he, I, I just found this one because I'm working my way through the whole video. Might as well. And this is happening over Zoom. And Thomas John is saying, laughing to himself, reading one of the questions. I'm going to show you the question. That's why it's only 27 seconds. But what it's going to do, I'm so glad he answered this question. I'm so pleased somebody asked him this question. Because what it's going to allow me to do is I'm going to be able to revisit a story I did in March. Back when I was starting out with this channel. And let me tell you, I'm at, what, 100 videos I've, I've uploaded it is a learning process to have a YouTube channel. Nobody teaches you this stuff. There's, you know, 900 videos out there giving you instruction on how to do stuff. I mean, even learning how to use the the different uh, editing tools, making screenshots, um, making the um, thumbnails that fit into the YouTube thing, the tags that I have to put in the articles. There's so much that I'm learning. Microphones, lighting, background so the person who was doing the videos back in march of 2013 when i 20 uh, 23 when i started this channel well it was me but where i am today it's a big difference as far as the the look and the feel of the video also i've learned that if i can't show the video for a lot of these um, television shows because then they're, uh, you know, it's copyrighted material according to YouTube, which probably is. So I am going to revisit this one. One of my most popular videos. I have 60,000 views on it. 60,000. Can you believe it? And that's not even one of my most, um, the largest one. I think I have another one out that has over 80 something thousand views. This one has 60,000 views, 179 comments. And people misunderstand it completely. And I will explain it in a minute. So let me show you this little clip. And I guess I should pull the video up first, huh? Okay. So he's he's having a little giggle. He's at uh, the conference, the conference, the, the gallery reading that he does in late September 2003. 23. My goodness, what is it? You would think I'd done like 10 of these videos today. It's only been about five. So I don't know. <laughs> oh, goodness. Great. I'm going to get through these videos. I'm telling you, I've got to move on to other stuff. So I want to get these things done. I'm one of those kind of people who likes to complete tasks. So here we go. You ready? Hold on. Somebody just said. Oh. <laughs> Somebody said, um, on the episode of Seatbelt Psychic, did you really kick that mortician out on the side of the road? Uh, basically, yes, actually, because I was very, it was actually kind of dangerous to be driving with her because I was starting to feel like I was going to pass out. Okay, so that's it. That's all it is. So he's answering a question that somebody has asked him in the chat during this gallery reading that he's doing that I'm analyzing a lot of these videos for. Okay, so let's... Let me go back. I'm going to, I'm going to explain a little bit. Now, when I did this video back in March of 2023, Hey, I got the year, right. Um, I was trying to explain some of the articles I had written about seatbelt psychic and Thomas John. And I was making the assumption that people already understood that seatbelt psychic is a TV show. It is not a ride share. And I was trying to explain in the mortician episode, which is really popular. I was trying to explain how the, the video is edited. Seatbelt Psychic is edited 
And you can see from looking at the screenshots of behind the driver's side window, behind the person in the back seat's window and the side windows, you can tell that he spends a lot of time with her in that car and not the the episode makes it sound like she gets in he freaks out he stops the car she gets out within a minute that's the way the episode is aired but that's not how what actually happens and you can tell that because of the way it's raining the way um the car is in one place and then all of a sudden it's parked in a parking spot and there's no pulling over to get into the parking spot and parking in the parking spot none of that it's just like I got to get you out of this car. I'm parked. Get out of the car. And so I was trying to explain that, but it was just, I guess, too advanced for people who are trying to still grasp grasp the fact that it's a TV show. There's cameras all over this thing. So Seatbelt Psychic is not a ride share. They're, I get that comment constantly is that they think somebody's filming inside of a cab and I guess they're using invisible cameras. I don't know what they think. Thomas John knows who's going to be getting in the backseat of that car. These people are um, additioned to be on the show or, you know, filled up paperwork to be on the show. They're dressed to be on the show. They sign paperwork before they get into the car. And I know this for a lot of reasons. Um, one of the reasons is because I know um, somebody who was in the back of the car and I interviewed that person and they told me lots of information about what actually happens. The mortician person, I know who she is. She's off of social media now, or if she is, she, she's using a a another name. And she admits that it's a show and that she was, um, she had been and mortician's assistant and she looks apart let me tell you so she had been a well no i guess i shouldn't say that because i think mortician's ex assistants probably look like just regular people but she's dressed up like a goth um over the top kind of gothy person who would be on a tv show and she's saying she's was worked in a mortuary and for a for a period of time so Oh my gosh, it's so hokey, you guys. Thomas John, as soon as she gets in the car, now he knows she's worked in the mortician business and mortuary business for a while. He gets in the car and he starts doing this like, and he starts going like this, like, uh, like he's, you know, he's, he's having a reaction to her and he tells her, and I'm not going to play the audio in the description for this video. You will see the link to my video if you want to watch that. And you will see um, him just going way over the top with his expressions. And the idea is, is she gets in the car and uh, like 200 people get in the car with her. And Thomas just freaks out because there's so many dead people clinging to this, this woman. And so he has to pull over immediately and get her out immediately from the car because he's going to faint. Okay, that's, that's the whole premise of the show. That is it. That is what happens in that episode of Seatbelt Psychic. And it's BS. Well, number one, he knows she's getting in the car. He knows who she is. He knows she's a, worked as a mortician's assistant. So, uh, and then his over-the-top behavior is so rehearsed. It's so obvious with all the camera angles showing him, you know, freaking out. Also, as if you watch the video that I have done, you'll see that there's all sorts of camera angles showing that the car is, she was in the car for a lot longer than the one minute. It looks like when you actually watch the show, there's so much more. I don't know. They probably drove around for a while or something. I don't know what happened, but it wasn't just that. And um, let me, let me show you a couple pictures so you can see what I'm, what I'm talking about, because I'm telling you, so here's what, these are screenshots I just took off of the video that I have. It was quicker to find them this way. So here's the video I made and I, and I have written here, the Academy Award for Best Acting goes to Seatbelt Psychic Thomas John. And that's her. What else do we have here? Here's the, here is the Seatbelt Psychic car. 
you know, this is no Uber. <laughs> there is huge camera right here. There's a huge camera on the dashboard. There's a camera over here. There's a camera over here. There's like nine camera angles. There's cameras on the top of the car. She knows darn well what she's doing. And you can't quite see, but right back here is a big microphone array. And let's see what else. What else I got for you? There's another camera angle. Here she's just getting in. She just seat belted herself in. Here's another. He has himself all fixed, but he's freaked out. Here's another um, picture of him all freaked out. He's looking at her. You can see she's all goth, like with the tattoos all over herself. Here she is, another close-up of her. You see what I mean about the back of the windows where you can see cars moving along and you can see the rain and things like that that's happening. What I was able to show in my video is, is that um, she gets in the car at a location and you can see that from the back. She puts on her seatbelt, the car starts starts moving and immediately says you got to get out but you can see you can't on this picture right now but you can see from the video i put up that you see traffic move and things like that and the car goes from one angle to another angle very quickly so we know that that the the it was edited to look like she was there for a couple seconds i think it's the last of the pictures again you can see the traffic and things like that so with the traffic the pictures from the background and I was able to, I and my team, it wasn't just me, my team and I were able to, to determine that this took longer. So anyway, when I explained this on the video I put up, people just absolutely didn't get it because it was just too advanced for them, I guess. Um, and I don't mean advanced as in I was all hotty toddy and talking with large words, but that it was, I was trying to explain, like I said, the editing process and so on. I was trying to make a point, but what they were saying is, oh, you didn't prove anything. You know, they were seeing it as that was their first view of um, a critical article, a critical video about seatbelt psychic when I was already like on um, two years ago, I had written about this and I'd already gone in great depth. So as usual, you know, I can't explain something in a second or two. I have to make sure I explain, over explain everything. <laughs> you know how it is. Sorry, you guys. So anyway, she, um, I want you to think about this again. What is missing? If it is true that death lingers around a person um, and a person who is in, works in the mortuary field has, and she was just an assistant. She says in her her uh, posts that she put up on Instagram that she did it for a while, just a little bit, not like this is a long term career for her. She that two hundred dead people would be clinging to you. Now, when they get into the mortuary, when they're in the mortuary area, they've been dead for a while. These aren't people dying. These are people who have died and now they're going to the uh, the mortuary for whatever is going to happen to him afterwards. So he's, I guess, Thomas John is trying to say that this woman had 200 bodies on her, that the dead hang around people who bury and work on bodies. Now, I don't know about you, but that doesn't make any sense to me. If, I guess the, if the dead can hang around anywhere, they can hang around wherever they want to be. But that didn't make a lot of sense to me. Well, okay, none of this stuff makes any sense to me. And I don't know about you, but leave it in the comments. Let me know what you think. <laughs> what is missing? If this was true, the giant if, then that would mean that people who work in a field like a doctor or a doctor's office where there are deaths, hospice, rest homes, um, graveyards, uh, people who are in the in war um, who have to you know deal with death, paramedics, um, you know keep going, you know people who. Um, go out and 
um, tow cars away from scenes of accidents, police, firemen, fire persons, um, all, all of those people have to deal with death. Coroners, just large amounts of people have to deal with death. Not only it is happened while they're there, but they have to help deal with I don't know how to say this eloquently, but like the disposal of the bodies, you know, the actual physical body, they have to do something with that person. And so there are large amounts of people in the world who have to do that. And 200 people, maybe in, in a, you know, a few years of a career, maybe that's common, depending on what, what we're talking about. Right. So if that is true. And that Thomas John gets dizzy, nauseous, can't drive, or whatever, when he's around a person like that, then he has no business driving. Especially if he's driving something that's supposed to be an Uber or a ride share, which we, we know it really isn't. It's a TV show. But if he feels lightheaded, dizzy, faint when he's around a person like this then how can he function in society how does he go into a hospital how does he see a doctor on just you know a day-to-day -day basis does if he goes to get a physical and the doctor or the staff or the room he's in or the hospital or whatever has had seen death then does he get lightheaded nauseous or whatever it is his problem is there that he can't drive he do you, I think you understand what I'm trying to say is that if we go with, if we don't, if, if we believe him, then he could be at the grocery store and somebody near him picking up tomatoes and, you know, looking at the corn and the lettuce and stuff like that near him could be a corner and he's going to pass out because they're you know or run to the other side of the store or something because that would be overwhelming he doesn't know who's around him until all of a sudden they're around him and, and it's too much for him right oh dear i mean also should he be driving the car next to him is it the at the at the light next to him i mean very close could could that be somebody in the car that the passenger side and he's just right next to him you know a few feet away could that be could that be a problem and he'll feel like lightheaded and he's gonna pass out what if they're at the signal for a while a few minutes i mean according to this video she's in the car he has a reaction within 10 seconds within two or three seconds of her walking into the car she gets in the car closes the door he immediately has a reaction and so if it is, if that is true, then if there's a car parked next to him, would it matter if the windows rolled up or rolled down? What if he's in a, you know, in a situation where he could be a danger to himself, like he's on a ladder and then he's standing there on a ladder doing something and here comes somebody who uh, the mill carrier comes up and says, oh, is this uh, Thomas John's house? I need to, I need to, uh, have you signed for this package? And then Thomas John's up on this ladder and now he's all of a sudden feeling dizzy because the person below him is actually now a letter carrier, but it used to be a coroner or a mortician or, a, you know, worked in hospice or was an EMT or, or whatever. That would be very dangerous. He might fall off the ladder. We can't have that. I'm sure you guys can come up with a lot more scenarios and I, I, I'm not that creative, but that's my idea is thinking that this is also measurable, right? This is, this is a testable claim. This is, this is every skeptic, scientific skeptic's dream. It's a testable claim. We should be able to take people who have worked in that business or who, who have at least had as much, uh, seen as much death as this woman has. And again, she's not seen death. She's seeing bodies. So she's not at the point where they're dying under her care, but where 
like she would be the same as somebody who works um, as a grave digger or works at a funeral home or works any of those kinds of things. So if you were to take 10 people that all kind of look generally like they could be whatever, and one of the people is working in that industry and the other nine have never had anything to do with death in any way, um, you know, more than maybe just what the average person has, would he be able to tell you which one is the person who's got all the deaths hanging around him? I mean, because that's testable. That is exactly a protocol right there. I've designed a protocol. We could test that. And then you figure out what the odds would be to make it statistically um, unlikely that he could just in a matter of guessing. So maybe you'd have a group of 10. One of the persons is the target. And then you would bring in another group of 10. And one of the persons is the target. And another group of 10. And one of the persons is the target. I don't do statistics uh, a lot. So there must be a mathematical formulation to tell you what the odds would be for him to be able to get all three of those right. And then you have to say, well, we don't want each of those people to come in contact with each other because they might ooze negative energy on each other so maybe he'd have to see each of the 10 i don't know you guys it's 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 doable it's testable <laughs> so i wanted to share that with you i'm so glad i got to tell you about this story now i'm going to put the description in the description of this video i will put a link to the to um the seatbelt psychic academy award mortician episode and you could be one of the people who moves the moves it up over 60,000 views that's fine but it was kind of back in my day when I was doing things a little differently and things were anyway just forgive me all right so I hope you enjoyed this I probably went on longer than I was expecting for a for a few second video but it's one of my favorites and I'm so glad I get a chance to actually explain it so like and share and leave me comments, please. And hit the little alert button so that you know when I'm uploading another video. I'm so glad you're here. I'm glad to be here too.